Russia, 1942. Hitler's tanks stand at the gates of Stalingrad. If the city falls, nothing can stop the Nazis from winning the war in the east. So the tank battle started. Tank versus tank. The Russians decided to defend the city furiously. The body count is rising, but neither side will back down. We stood up a hornet's nest. They fought to the last man. The killing goes on in a desperate fight to the finish. Whoever shoots first wins and survives. It is the bloodiest battle of the Second World War. Tanks were burning and destroyed. Two massive tank armies clash in the Battle of Stalingrad, one of history's greatest tank battles. Volgograd. With its apartment buildings and factories, it is a typical picture of modern Russia. But rising high above the city, the gigantic statue of Mother Russia recalls a darker past, when Volgograd was known by another infamous name, Stalingrad. Here in 1942, Russian and German armies fight the bloodiest battle in human history, the battle for Stalingrad. It is the culmination of a year of brutal fighting after the Nazi invasion of the Soviet Union, Operation Barbarossa. When the Germans started to invade Russia, they were convinced that the Red Army would collapse within six to eight weeks. But the Russian army didn't collapse according to plan. And the Germans had over one million casualties in this first year, and they lost nearly 75, 80% of the tanks. In Hitler's desperation to turn the tide, he comes up with a new plan, Operation Blue. His plan, German Army Group A will advance south and capture the Soviets' oil supplies in the Caucasus. Army Group B will sweep through the corridor between the Don and Volga rivers and seize a key Soviet center of war industry and communications, the city of Stalingrad. To capture Stalingrad, the Germans send one of Army Group B's best equipped mobile armored forces, 300,000 battle-hardened men. 3,000 artillery pieces and 300 tanks. The armored Nazi onslaught forces the Soviets back to the River Don. Stalin knows his army must make a stand, and he anchors his entire defensive line at Stalingrad. If it falls, nothing can stop the Germans from winning the war in the east. Desperate to buy time, they send their understrength first and fourth tank armies. With only 200,000 men, 100 artillery pieces, and just 258 T-34 and 40 KV-1 heavy tanks to fight the powerful German 6th Army. Outnumbered, the Russians must fight a desperate rearguard action to delay the Germans crossing the River Don. Well, a decision was made as soon as we were aware that the Germans came out to the Don. We were told to immediately organize two tank armies. We would defend this high ground here. We could not let the Germans through. We had to stop them. All of us lived with that idea in mind. That was our task. July 27, 1942. The Germans advance on the River Don to seize the main crossing just 65 kilometers from Stalingrad. But the Russian 1st Tank Army launches a counterattack to stop them. 
With the first tank army is Lieutenant Vasily Kresov, leading a platoon of KV-1 heavy tanks. A series of green flares soared into the sky, the signal for the attack. Our engine roared, and our KV moved out towards the enemy. It was beginning to grow lighter, and the Germans opened a storm of fire. One shell exploded about 20 meters ahead of our tanks. Almost immediately, a second shell glances off our left side. We had heavy Clement Voroshilov tanks, KVs. They have quite thick armor. The KV-1 heavy tank is a 43-ton monster. Its 76-millimeter main cannon is lethal even at long range. And with 75 millimeters of frontal armor, it's the most heavily armored tank on the battlefield. The tanks accelerated, making sharp maneuvers, and shell strikes continued glancing off their sides. Our tanks went out and had 15 to 20 dents from the shells. The Russians always formed waves of tanks and sent them forward as a huge, massive hammerhead, not as the Germans as a, as a flexible maneuver force, but just as a blunt instrument. Toiler, stop! There's a gun just under the tree. Anti-personnel shell, fire! The fascist gun fell silent and for good. Two tanks were burning to the right. Serov's tank to my left hit a Straka mine. A second gun was now firing at our tank. The Germans managed to hit us three times, but the shells hadn't penetrated the armor. German cannons could not destroy the armor of heavy tanks. That is why tanks were used to break the enemy's defense and destroy the permanent weapon emplacements of the enemy. Toila, crush the gun! The KV-1 tanks storm into the village, but now face a more deadly foe. Since both sides often try to break through the other side, um, the tanks got closer and closer. Our brigade moved towards a farm where the main enemy panzer group was positioned. The ensuing combat was fierce. A panzer fort tank quickly moved in our direction. The battle on the Eastern Front was tanks rolling into a good position, standing, aiming very slowly for, for our modern um, eyes, and then shooting, and it was kind of a, of a duel often. Halt! Armor piercing! Fire! The German gun layer beat us to the punch. However, after the hit by our shell, the German tank blew up. Serov's crew also set fire to a tank. They kept the enemy back for the whole month at great cost of life. And they gave our high command, our general staff, a chance to accumulate and move up the reserves to Stalingrad in order to defend it. In one month's fighting, the Russians lose over 300,000 men and 1,000 tanks. And by August 23rd, the first tank army has been all but wiped out. 
Now there is nothing to stop the hundreds of German tanks pouring across the River Don and reaching the banks of the River Volga at Stalingrad. The enemy is at the gates. The Russian defenders now face a fight for survival. Most of all, we were feeling emotionally that we would fight for Stalingrad. Yes, we will resist. We will resist this fight. June 1942, a year after Hitler's invasion of Russia, his armies have suffered a million casualties. Desperate to finish off the war in the east, Hitler launches Operation Blue. By August 23rd, Hitler's sixth army stands at the gates of Stalingrad, the Russians' last line of defense. If the city falls, nothing can stop the Germans from winning the war in the east. Now, to prepare the way for his ground assault, Hitler sends hundreds of planes to bomb the city, terrorize its people, and crush their resistance. The city was on fire. The city was destroyed. The German air bombardment kills 40,000 men, women, and children. The survivors scramble from the ruins as the first German tanks begin their assault on the city. The German plan, attack Stalingrad from three directions, seize the main boat landing on the river Volga, cutting off reinforcements, and capture the city. The speed and ferocity of the German assault stuns the Russian defenders. They scramble to the outskirts of the city to repel the attack with anti-tank rifles. We went on a counter-offensive battle to cut off the Germans that had broken through to the Volga as a company commander of anti-tank guns. Now 20 tanks were coming to us from the Volga River toward infantry lying in an open field. There were 16 anti-tank rifles, each two and a half meters long. The biggest problem for us was the anti-tank rifles. They use projectiles that penetrate the light armor, and they caused quite some damage to us. I personally saw the power of an anti-tank bullet. The bullet pierced the outer armor first, frontal armor. Some of its fragments could strike a crew member of the enemy tank. And one of the fragments might get into the gas tank, causing it to catch on fire and explode. They set one tank on fire, then another. A third started spinning, and the rest of the tanks stopped. At that time, I would say, they were still on the defensive, but they fought to the last man. At first, we were winning, of course, but under difficult circumstances. Despite Russian resistance, German tanks seized Stalingrad's northern suburbs, threatening to capture the nearby tractor factory that has been converted to produce T-34 tanks. This factory is one of the last left under Soviet control, so they desperately need to keep it out of enemy hands. At that plant, I formed a tank squadron. We were ready. So we were together with workers' brigade with people's volunteers and with fighter battalions. Short of men and tanks, the factory workers and the T-34 tanks they have just assembled are led by Soviet army officers directly from the factory floor into battle. 
the Soviets were masters of mass production. The T-34 was not a, a beautiful tank, but they could produce this tank in vast numbers in a very short time. The T-34 has a simple design. A powerful 76 millimeter main gun, 45 millimeters of sloped frontal armor, and a top speed of 40 kilometers an hour. It is the workhorse of the Red Army. The T-34 was a brilliant mixture of mobility, armor, and firepower. And now the Russians will need that firepower. Suddenly the commander of the armored units rushed to us, and he said that the German troops broke through by the Volga, right to the plant. Well, the command we received was to move there and stop the tanks by the river. The commands I gave were simple, follow me, do as I do. The attack was very powerful. The projectile of the T-34 penetrated our armor and was therefore able to destroy us more easily. Several tanks were hit. The Germans also lost a lot of tanks and their grenadiers. When you see the first dead or wounded fellow soldiers, and you see how terrible it all was, I was very scared. We advanced in columns and forced the Germans out. That was my baptism of fire. The first day of the battle has been a deadly one for the people of Stalingrad. They have repelled the German attack, but suffer tens of thousands of casualties, and the city is now surrounded on three sides. General Vasily Chukov now takes command of the besieged city. And if it falls, so too will the entire Soviet defensive line, and the war in the east will be lost. Chukov sends a message to the Soviet high command. We will defend the city or die trying. He turns every street and every building into a death trap, as the Germans will soon find out. Damn, that was a dangerous situation. We stirred up a hornet's nest. October 1942. The battle for Stalingrad has been raging for 83 days at a cost of over half a million Russian and German soldiers. Hitler's armies surround the city on three sides. If General Chukov and the Soviets lose Stalingrad, they will lose the war in the east. So they vow to defend the city to the last man. Stalingrad became for them the symbol of this holding the line, so they decided to um, defend the city furiously. And that's the reason why Stalingrad became such a culmination point of fighting on the Eastern Front. The German plan was to bomb Stalingrad, hoping to crush resistance in the city. But two months later, their plan has backfired. The massive bombing raids have transformed Stalingrad into a deadly killing ground. Rubble-filled ruins provide a thousand places for lethal ambushes. We actually had urban warfare for the very first time during all these years of war. That was something new for us. The German attack is bogged down in fierce street fighting. Its mighty panzer armies can't maneuver easily through the ruined urban battleground. Funneled down streets, they fall prey to General Chukov and his men. Masses of enemy infantry, supported by tanks, swooped along the road from the tractor factory. We drove in a fire down the middle of the street. 
because you can't maneuver the vehicles otherwise. We continued on until that moment when I spotted the tanks. Our tank crews met an enemy attack with concentrated fire. They were basically superior to us. We stirred up a hornet's nest. Ten enemy tanks immediately went up in flames. German generals sent up more and more fresh units in waves. The German tanks coming under fire from our T-34s turned back. And the vehicles pulled out to get out of the fire line of the Russian tanks. Afterwards, you say to yourself, damn, that was a dangerous situation. All across the city, German casualties mount as the Russians repel the invaders. With each small victory, the Russians weaken the German attack while buying time to strengthen their own forces. Hitler is determined to press for victory before the Soviets can counterattack. But the city cannot be conquered with mass tank attacks. The German soldier will have to take Stalingrad in savage close quarter fighting, street by street, building by building. Stalingrad is a big city and has lots of buildings. In general, going into a house during urban warfare was usually very dangerous. We took cover in the holes, and there we would sit and wait for the tanks to come close enough to shoot them. The rule of thumb was whoever shoots first wins and survives. One of them was driving along the main streets, with one of our scouts following him on his motorcycle, throwing hand grenades on the T-34. The tank was shooting crosswise. The gun was pointed like this. So after he shot, I thought, now I get out quickly and deposit the charge on his rear. We would try to deposit the charge on top of the engine on the rear of the tank. But he had obviously seen me. He turned very fast and shot. A splinter injured my head and I was unconscious. The scout dragged me to the side of the street so the tank wouldn't overrun me and threw the remaining grenades onto the T-34. November 1942. After months of savage street fighting, the Russians have lost hundreds of thousands of men. They hold just a few small pockets of the city with their backs against the Volga River. And they are running critically low on food and ammunition. Well, the situation was very difficult. The fate of our motherland hung by a thread. The Germans prepare for their final push to destroy the stubborn Russian resistance in the city. But the battle is far from over. The Soviets plan a new offensive with their last reserves of men and tanks. A final gamble that will turn the tide of the Second World War. After five months of brutal fighting, the Germans have conquered almost all of Stalingrad. The Russian defenders, surrounded with their backs to the river Volga, are desperate. Hoping to break the siege, the Soviet high command comes up with a daring plan. Operation Uranus. The plan, Soviet armies, a total of 800 tanks and one million men, will attack simultaneously from the southeast and north, cut through the German lines, and join up at Kalach on the Don River to encircle the German 6th Army besieging Stalingrad. 
On November 19, 1942, the Soviets launched their attack. The big attack on Stalingrad by the Russians started. But this had been so well prepared by the Russians, and they had so many forces there, that there was no way we were going to get through. It's a bold move. Russian tanks smash through weak enemy resistance in just two days and storm across the River Don at Kalach. Manning a machine gun with the German units defending the river crossing is Gunter Koshorek. We can now hear other noises, the droning of diesel engines and the squeaky clatter of tank trucks. The Russians are already across the Don. Then the T-34s emerge from the haze. I count five of the steel giants. I've never seen an enemy tank this close before. And it looks very menacing. He stops at the edge of the trench with his broadside towards us. Suddenly he backs up. He has spotted us and is turning his turret towards us. The shell strikes home just meters behind us. And he lowers his gun and aims directly at us. Suddenly, the tank is literally blown apart. The pioneers call over to us that they have destroyed it with a couple of mines. Koshorek survives, but the bigger picture is bleak for the Germans. The two Soviet forces link up at the Don River, trapping the 250,000 men of the 6th German Army in Stalingrad. We understood that here we did something extraordinary. And when the commanding officers drive up, they shake hands, praise us, and then they start telling us, you guys, we have encircled a huge army. Operation Uranus has cut off vital supply lines, and shortages of food, fuel, and ammunition are quickly felt by the Germans in Stalingrad. Hitler must act quickly, or the entire 6th Army will be lost. German High Command plans a relief mission, Operation Winter Storm. The plan, elite panzer divisions, a total of 250 tanks and 50,000 men, will punch through Soviet lines, open a corridor to Stalingrad through which the 6th Army can escape. December 12, 1942. Operation Winter Storm begins. Desperate to counter the rescue attempt, the Russians hurriedly send a force to intercept the advancing German tanks near Verknikumsky. But the German commander, General Erhard Raus, has set a deadly trap. Russian forces poured out of Verknikomsky at dawn. In long columns, the tank units of this division were advancing. This area was situated in the valley. It was the strength of our tanks that they were able to maneuver themselves into tactical, favorable positions. And it was crucial for our tanks to bring themselves into a position preferably where they couldn't be seen by the enemy, from where they could easily get the Russian tanks from the side. All of a sudden, German tanks appeared on the snow-covered hills. They slowly advanced towards their victims, who as yet were unaware of their imminent disaster. A concentric attack began. It is a complete encirclement of the Russian brigade. The enemy suddenly saw more than 200 tanks descended from the hills and fall upon his columns. 200 guns fired from close range at the enemy tanks. All tanks were armored very well at the front, but not so much on the sides. This is how they were successful. The 
Russian tanks engage the German tanks coming down from the hills in a fire duel for life or death. The enemy attack ended in a tank graveyard. The Germans defeat the Russian counterattack and cross the Axe River. They are now less than 70 kilometers from their 250,000 trapped comrades. So there was a real threat of a breakthrough to Stalingrad and a possibility to save the trapped 6th Army. But the Soviets have sacrificed too much to allow the German 6th Army to escape. If they can keep them encircled in the city, they can win the Battle of Stalingrad and cripple German forces on the Eastern Front. They vow to stop the relief force, whatever the cost. Our main objective was no step back. Do not give a single inch of land to the Germans until either side is destroyed. December 12th, 1942. For three weeks, the German 6th Army in Stalingrad has been surrounded. 250,000 soldiers are freezing in the winter cold and running out of food, fuel, and ammunition. Without fresh supplies, the 6th Army will be lost. Hitler sends an elite panzer army to rescue them. The Russians send 350 of their own tanks to halt the advancing German relief column. The commander ordered us to move forward quickly to intercept and stop them from crossing the river. My squadron only had seven tanks. But I was lucky. When I got to the ford in the river, somebody had dug a sand pit in the bank of the river. When we entered the sand pit, it was like entering a trench. Most of the tank is hidden and only the turret and the gun are above ground. The Germans had to come down the one road to the river, and when they did, they exposed their sides to us. and we look for the weak point on the side. The Panzer IV has side armor that is just 30 millimeters thick, making it vulnerable to a direct hit. But it is equipped with a powerful 75 millimeter main gun, capable of knocking out any Russian tank. His gun is quite the thing. That is why you have to be so precise. You aim, you wait. I strictly ordered my men to hold their fire until my first shot, to let them come closer. We'll wait for the right moment to open fire. All my crew are worried. They are getting nervous. Everybody was waiting, thinking, is the commander afraid or something? Why is he not shooting? The Germans are getting close. We could see the crosses on their tanks. My guys waited until my first shot. Then they all started firing their guns. You set one on fire, then you hit another one. Everybody is reporting, hit. The official report is 11 German tanks we set on fire.
Despite the losses, German tanks continue to advance across the river and are now less than 60 kilometers from Stalingrad. But the Russian attacks cost the Germans precious time, something in short supply for the trapped 6th Army. Hundreds die every day from wounds, starvation, and hypothermia. The situation is dire. They are running out of time. The relief column makes one final push to break through. But the Russians are waiting for them en masse at the tiny village of Verknikumsky. We were sent out to Verknikumsky to occupy the settlement. Forward, forward. So the tank battle started, tank versus tank. Tanks were destroyed and burning. There were explosions all around, and the ground was black. Hundreds of tanks are set ablaze. The battle rages day and night. And here we are moving forward. We were rushing towards our new position. Night time, we are moving. There were six tanks left. There were Germans there. They must have taken us for their own troops because we have the headlights on. Lieutenant Plugin performed an act of bravery. His tank was set on fire. The gun was broken in half by a shell. The fighting in the village becomes even more desperate. The fate of the German 6th Army and victory at Stalingrad hangs in the balance. So he made the decision to make a ram attack against one of their tanks. The German 6th Army is surrounded in Stalingrad and running out of supplies. Hitler sends a relief panzer force to rescue them. The Russians, desperate to keep their stranglehold on the encircled army, send hundreds of tanks to halt the advancing German relief column at the village of Verknikumsky. Victory at Stalingrad hangs in the balance. So my Lieutenant Plugin performed an act of bravery. His tank was set on fire. The gun was broken in half by a shell. So he made the decision to make a ram attack against one of their tanks. one of the German tanks, and this was astonishing for them. That was Verknikumsky, and that's how our people fought. Finally, the battle ends after three days and three nights of carnage. The Russians sacrificed more than 400 tanks and thousands of men. But despite their heroism, they cannot halt the German relief column, now just 50 kilometers from Stalingrad. The rescue of a quarter of a million men trapped there appears imminent. But the Germans have an Achilles heel. Every day, a fleet of transport planes from airfields deep behind German lines must fly vital supplies to the encircled 6th Army. Without the airlift, it cannot keep fighting. And now, I need to add something which I think was left out a lot everywhere in the story about Stalingrad. I'm talking about the pilots that flew into the encirclement every day up until the end. First, a lot, and then, gradually fewer. They brought us ammunition and frozen bread. 
December 16, 1942, the Soviets, hoping to exploit the German vulnerability, launch Operation Little Saturn. The plan, Soviet tanks will make a daring raid on the vital airfields, forcing key German panzer divisions to defend them and abandon their relief of Stalingrad. Christmas Eve, 1942. Russian tanks suddenly emerge out of the fog and attack the main German airfield at Tatsinskaya. A Soviet officer describes the attack. Our tanks unexpectedly broke into Tatsinskaya military airport. A tough fight between tanks and enemy artillery began. Germans shooting shells at the Russian tanks managed to blow up several of them. However, the Soviet tank crews broke the Nazi defense. Some of the tanks are low in ammunition and ran the transport planes. Operation Little Saturn is a success. It cripples the air fleet supplying Stalingrad and the German high command is forced to divert the 6th Panzer Division to defend the airfields and abandon its relief of Stalingrad. The loss of the 6th Panzer Division critically weakens the relief force. All hope of rescuing the 6th Army in Stalingrad is lost. Under the pressure of constant Russian attacks, the Germans in Stalingrad soon exhaust their supplies of fuel and ammunition. Aber after a few days, we ran out of ammunition, and we all became infantrymen. The tank was of no use anymore and just stayed there, stuck in the snow. On January 31st, 1943, the 6th Army surrenders. The Russian victory at Stalingrad is a turning point of the Second World War. From this day on, the Soviet army would force the Germans all the way back to Berlin and to their final defeat. Stalingrad was, of course, a military disaster. We're talking about a whole army being lost on the Eastern Front. That's a quarter of a million people. But the, the main point was the blow against the morale of the Germans, because this idea of invincibility, this idea of winning every battle they picked, uh, was blown to pieces at this point. For the Russians, victory comes at an even higher price. Over one million of their people die in the defense of Stalingrad. I will tell you a story about this tank here. I feel the memories come to the surface. Memories of this place in 1942. That was a time of hardships. On the 50th, anniversary of the victory of Stalingrad, I personally drove this tank here, and it will stay here in the memory of the fallen soldiers who gave their lives to defend their country. Tankists, in the war, this tank was built here. 